2018 Lincoln Continental 3.0 TAWD. It was with some trepidation that we punched the start button on this Lincoln Continental road test. What if Lincoln revived its hallowed nameplate only because its own execs couldn't keep straight the alphabet soup of three-letter badges beginning with MK? What if this new flagship turned out to be another lightly fluffed Ford? What if this Conti is no better than the Taurus-based edition sold 20 years ago or it's a turkey like the Blackwood pickup that lasted exactly one model year? Lincoln fans, especially those still pining for the town car, perk up at any mention of the Continental. While few remember that Edsel Ford's 1939 gift to automotive artistry reinterpreted two classic design features long hood, short deck proportions and the spare tire as a fashion accessory some surely recall the magnificent Mark II coupes that followed in 1956 and the elegant Kennedy-era Continental four-door hardtops and convertibles. On those rare occasions when Lincoln got the Continental right, it was the day's premier land yacht. Now Lincoln's game is reprising fine design, premium interiors, and exemplary performance for prosperous customers beckoned by more than a dozen import and domestic makers. The US is ground zero, with a few exports to China where the Lincoln brand still commands respect. After witnessing Audi, BMW, and Mercedes bloody Cadillac in sales in the sports sedan category, Lincoln is taking a pass on that fight for now. Establishing exterior dimensions that are a touch grander in every direction than a Mercedes E-Class's enabled Lincoln design chief David Woodhouse to sculpt the Continental with nicely flowing lines and voluptuous proportions. The new face of Lincoln is a Bentley-esque grille shared with the facelift MKZ and slated to replace the bow wave motif throughout the brand's lineup. Another lapse in creativity is the racetrack tail lamp theme long used by Dodge and seen on both past and freshened MKZs. At least there's beauty in the details. Substantial body forms and gentle creases showcase the Continental's wheels and tires. There are just enough badges and insignias to reveal this car's identity. Our favorite feature is the side window trim finished in a polished silver hue that neatly integrates thin mirror pedestals and substantial door handles with the belt line. While skateboarders will surely be tempted to grab those inviting loops for a tow, their intended purpose is to elevate the entry experience. A light touch on their inside surface activates a micro switch that unlatches the door electrically. Spring pressure initiates the opening swing, and other mechanisms ease the final closing and latching effort. This ambitious reinvention of the door handle suggests that Lincoln may finally be serious about clearing the skepticism clouding this brand. Interior designers took excellent advantage of the Continental's sprawling 117.9-inch wheelbase 5 inches longer than the retired Lincoln MKS flagships to vault this mid-size luxury sedan contender well into the EPA's large car category. The headline feature is 30-way front seat adjustability, a $1,500 option that Lincoln unapologetically calls perfect position seating. 14 door-mounted mini switches, working in cahoots with the center touch screen, let you slide, raise, inflate, and heat cushions and energize massage action to your heart's content. You can bear hug your ribs for hard cornering and set thigh support at two different elevations to stimulate circulation. Grippy perforated leather upholstery, a steering wheel with proper thumb notches, and a perfectly executed dead pedal suggest that the driver's needs earn due consideration during the Continental's interior design process. Rear seat occupants enjoy the full limousine treatment with an elevated seating height, indulgent legroom, and a headliner contoured to accommodate the lankiest tycoon. Unfortunately, other interior details land lower on the execution scale. The dash top pad on our $66,535 Continental Reserve model was elegantly stitched and soft to the touch, but its coarse-grained surface looks more like molded rubber than animal hide. Wood accents are so brightly varnished that they're hard to distinguish from plastic. And glittering chrome frames throughout the interior hurl the mood back to the 60s. It's as if the Continental's interior designers followed a brief distinctly different from the one guiding their exterior colleagues. A vertical shift button array clears console space for two huge storage bins, a pair of cup holders, and a longitudinal slot that nicely accommodates the largest smartphone. Most of the bugs have been worked out of Ford's Sync 3 infotainment management system, 
which can be commanded by voice or by tapping the appropriate spot on the 8-inch touch screen. And there are nicely knurled knobs to control radio volume and tuning and the climate control system's fan speed. No all-thinking, all-knowing mouse is present to execute your bidding. Instead, there are tiny chrome toggles sprinkled about the center console and the steering wheel to set cabin temperature, cycle through display menus, and instruct the chassis and powertrain how to behave. And, while paddle shifters suggest that Lincoln is hip to the 21st century, the Continental's flimsy, molded plastic levers feel like they came from the Focus's parts bin. Instead of blessing Lincoln's flagship with the rear-slash-all-wheel drive platform that the Continental nameplate deserves, strategists tap the tried-and-true CD4 architecture currently living under the Ford Fusion and Edge as well as the Lincoln MKX and Z for another go. Component sharing is now such standard industry practice that it's hard to challenge Lincoln's parsimony while its annual volume barely tops 100,000 units, well below Cadillacs and less than one-third of what BMW, Lexus, and Mercedes each sell here. And, even though CD4 was launched for the 2013 model year, there's life left in these bones. Each time engineers develop a new application, they discover ways to refine the parts they started with. In addition to significant length and width increases over its platform mates, the Continental receives three corporate V6 engines ranging from 300 horsepower to the potent 400 of the 3.0-liter twin-turbo in the six-speed automatic, all-wheel drive model tested here. While the top two engines are proud members of the EcoBoost, known internally as Nano, engine family, Lincoln will steer well clear of that nomenclature in customer communications. Consistent with our mixed emotions concerning the Continental's interior and exterior designs, our driving and testing experiences wandered all over the enthusiasm map. The well-weighted, slack-free, and almost communicative steering is the best chassis feature. Turning effort is thankfully high enough that Lincoln lawyer Matthew McConaughey won't be steering this car with the bottom of his wrist. We also laud the tuning invested in this version of Lincoln's continuously controlled, electronic, dampers. You can select comfort mode for a ride that verges on float, normal for good all-around behavior, or sport for attacking the mountain pass of your choice with competent and pain-free body and wheel motion control. Switching modes requires tapping three different steering wheel switches in proper sequence, but that pays off with moves that approach sports sedan standards. Unfortunately, the Continental's 45-55 pound curb weight, all-season Michelin primacy radials, and intrusive stability control system halt the cornering fun at only 84 centimos. The Conti's 400 lbft of torque reporting for duty at 2,750 rpm yields a 5.0 second flat blast to 60 miles per hour, matching a Cadillac CT6 with a twin-turbo 3.0-liter V6 and easily blowing away the Lexus GS350, Mercedes E3004 MATIC, and the outgoing BMW 535iX drive we've tested. The on-demand all-wheel drive seamlessly anticipates the need for maximum traction as your right foot nudges the accelerator and provides a comforting sense of security on wet pavement. Unfortunately, an annoying throttle calibration and transmission hitches compromise the impressive urge. Stroke the gas pedal through the first third of its travel and this engine goes for broke, impeding smooth passing moves and keeping nothing in reserve. The six-speed transmission is reluctant to downshift, unable to hold gears at the red line, and fraught with sag then surge reactions when you crack the horsewhip. Another concern is not one whit of engine braking when you lift off and tap the paddle shifter for a lower gear. While the Continental's numb left pedal is incommunicado concerning the vented front, solid rear disc brake system's activity, it will halt this hefty four-door from 70 miles per hour in 170 feet with minimal fade during repeated stops. All the aforementioned competitors, each hundreds of pounds lighter, beat that performance save the BMW 535i, which is a close match. Rivals also top this Lincoln's 0.84G cornering grip, some by a little, some by a lot. The new Genesis G90 powered by the twin-turbo V6 strikes us as the Continental soulmate. 
Both these flagships deliver comparable occasionally even impressive performance with loudly unspoken sports sedan aspirations. Decent sales while the supply pipeline is still filling confirm that the Continental does appeal to Lincoln's traditional supporters. But forgive us for mentioning the untapped potential we believe is buried deep within the Continental's soul. A diet regimen, fixes for the ergonomic lapses, and a stability system reprogrammed to take advantage of the already optional 20-inch summer tires could move this Lincoln in our direction. While Lincoln has repeatedly stressed that the Continental isn't engineered or tuned to attack the incumbent European sports sedans, this car clearly tops the brand's past efforts. We're convinced that a slight change in focus and another stab at tuning could produce the first Continental that's truly at home in a car enthusiast's driveway. Thank you.